Welcome back to Outpost Review. <laughs> the things that I do for these dogs, I bring them down here about four or five times a day, and they just love it. <laughs> They're chewing the roots out of the bank right there, so I don't know what's more destructive, these dogs or a flash flood. Anyway, um, we're going to finish playing down here. Get them all wet, cool them off, and then we'll go back up there to the out, back up there to the outpost, and we'll talk some more. I just got back from the lumber store. I had to pick up some more wood to frame around the doors, and I'm going to have some help coming up. Um, on the weekend, I believe, so I had to have more since I'm going to have a couple of people. It was a toss-up whether to mill some lumber or do the up overhead inside there, and I decided to go ahead and do up overhead because I can always mill lumber by myself. It just takes me a while. But I had to pick up some more of this venting, uh, so I got four of those. And then the thing that I've been pouring the concrete in, which is this plastic container right here um, it actually busted and cracked uh, on me the one that I got so I stopped and I got two of them I'm gonna leave one inside the other because it makes it a lot more uh, stiff and hopefully when I get the wheelbarrow over in there um, hopefully it won't crack on me so yeah I'm going to uh, work on this uh, when I get some help and then I had to take a break from laying the rock because I cut my finger and I'll tell you what, just reaching in and getting mortar or picking up the stone or doing anything like that, uh, it was so sensitive. So I decided to take a few days off from laying the rock and work on the cabin. Um, but I've got, uh, lacking a couple of pieces, I've got two sections done on the front and i got one section left so when that's done then uh, when I was talking about milling the lumber, I want to mill that, stack it, let it dry a little bit before my son gets back again so that we can start on the decking of the front porch because it would really be nice to be able to walk out that front door and be on the front porch. So that's what this little haul was about. So let's go inside and I'll show you what my plans are. Over there, we've basically got uh, the bedroom almost complete. There's some trim pieces that I'm going to need to put up, um, but that's looking real good. So I've got the material, I've got some more insulation, I've got the radiant barrier, but I needed those vents because I'm going to continue to go across um, with the sheetrock up here in this area right here. Uh, and this time we're only going to basically do the bottom half all the way to the end then when I get some help again do the top half all the way to the end and then the cabin will be primarily two-thirds done and then we can finish that other side but uh, last time we tried to put up 12 pieces and it nearly killed us I mean uh, we worked I don't know what was it seven hours doing those um, the issue is it being on an angle and being up there and a couple of, uh, of us uh, not afraid to get up, you know, um, height-wise up in the rafters. Um, it's just tough to hold it on an angle and uh, get it screwed in. Now, I know that those jack stands, you can do that, but then that's just extra money. And I want to try to save as much as possible, so I'm just waiting on help to get here to do that. But uh, that's what my plan is, basically do a section at a time that way. We're only looking at six or seven pieces and it's not going to take a toll on us like it did the last time. So that's what the upcoming plan is. Well, I had a few items here that I wanted to talk about just briefly. One of them is this uh, super chip that I purchased for my truck. Um, I actually had one for my other truck primarily to cut that eco 
um, I don't know what they really call it, but it where the truck goes from four cylinder to eight cylinder back to four cylinder because I have noticed um, when I'm going down the road it kind of wants to shake a little bit when you're going from four cylinder to eight cylinder and there's a little bit of a pause and when I stop that where you just basically plug this into the computer on the truck and you can um, take that off uh, the truck seemed to run a whole lot better. It didn't get that much difference gas mileage and the truck seemed to perform like I said a whole lot better So when I traded trucks though when I came home all the stuff that I had boxed You know put when I was swapping trucks. I had that in the box and uh, I called down there to the dealer Somebody had already bought it and they couldn't give out the name and I can't you know take the VIN number out of that other one to plug into this truck because you have to put the VIN number in there so basically it was useless so I had to buy another one it's like 350 bucks but um, to me it's worth it, especially all of the hauling uh, just like when I had that load of rock coming back from North Carolina of course I put it on tow haul which changed um, the engine performance quite a bit so we really didn't have any issues but if I'm just driving normal without a load on the truck um, I think I want to go ahead and take that four cylinder to eight cylinder out uh, Where the truck performs a whole lot better and there's other things that you can do you can change all different types of performance items and uh, Things of that nature with one of these little tools right here The other thing is uh, be watching on the outpost channel upcoming real soon We're going to have a review on this little flashlight. This is by Wubin uh, They sent us one of these um, it's really similar to the through night that I had done a review on probably about a year ago now um, And I really like that little flashlight and last night I was testing this one out in the dark and they basically perform uh, Pretty much the same so like I said be watching out for this uh, On the outpost channel because the company is going to give you 20% off they're regular, I think it's $57, and you could get it for $45 if you're interested. There's six different light modes on it. Uh, it's got Firefly, low, medium, high. It's got a strobe on it. Um, it's got this little lanyard that it came with. Um, the battery, I don't know if the battery sizes are any different, but it's got O-rings on the inside, and it's supposed to be waterproof. As well, this bottom, is magnetic so that's something that the through night flashlight doesn't have um, but this is the battery that comes in it and let's take this one out and see how big this one is see if there's any difference in them I don't think that there is uh, they're pretty much see there they're pretty well actually the Wubin is just a hair bit bigger but um, these batteries you know they work really well and uh, they will end up their LED and they put out a lot of light so like I said be stay tuned for the outpost channel because we will be doing a review on this you know when companies reach out to us um, they reach out to us primarily because of our outpost channel and the number of people that we have you know around the world and of course you know if you're a company uh, that's what you're looking for so how many eyes are you going to get your product in front of so you know we have some comments where people say that they don't like the tool reviews well I disagree because if I run into something that I think is unique and that you can benefit from then I'm going to tell you about it because otherwise you may never know so I think that's just part of um, being a good um, YouTube channel is to let people know you know when you run into something that's uh, decent and something that you can use but this little flashlight and the, I noticed the clip on it's just a little bit bigger but they're both made out of aircraft aluminum and um, they're really nice you know you they're small put in your pocket but yet they put out um, light like the big mag flashlights so yeah stay tuned for that the only thing it didn't come with was this little case right here like the through night did but uh, primarily they're the same type of flashlight so Stay tuned if you're interested in one of these, it'll get you a great discount on it. Another thing that I purchased was another tripod stand. I guess you notice over here 
Um, we've got three cameras that we operate with. That provides us a bunch of different angles that I can splice together to make the videos more dynamic. Um, but these tripods, they're very expensive. Uh, one of these is, is almost $200. So I had two and the third one, when I bought the third camera there, I just had a pretty much a cheap stand. And what happens is the weight of the camera, when I loosen up everything to try to move it, the weight of the camera keeps it uh, from basically fine-tuning uh, where I want it to go. So I decided to go ahead and purchase another one of these because they have kind of like, um, I don't know, it, it operates kind of like hydraulics. Um, it will pan very easy, nice and smooth, um, and it's got, you know, slow fluid movement basically on all the different angles. Plus, the base that mounts onto the tripod is uh, fairly substantial. Where that one right there, it's, it's really dinky. So, um, talked to my son. He said, let's just go ahead and order another one. So, pretty much, and they come in a really nice case. Uh, but this one, the difference in this one is it's carbon fiber, uh, where the others are aluminum. And it's because they don't make those anymore. But um, I'll open this up here. And kind of show you. Um, it all comes with a piece right here where it can be a monopod um, and then it's got a nice arm here that you attach to the base right there to be able to pan and make uh, nice fluid movements like I said. But the camera stand is uh, really nice. I don't know if you can see this or not. It's made by Kayer, and then here's the base. It's a really substantial base, and how you take that off is you loosen this up right here, okay, and then it will slide backwards and forwards. This little button right here allows you to release it for it to come off. So when I first slide the camera on, it's locked in there even though I haven't tightened it down yet and it can't come off. This right here basically tightens it up where it doesn't move. Um, and then it's got a nice level on it um, and the tripod basically has uh, legs that extend three different ways and it's, it's, it's really nice, really, really nice. So, like I said, the only difference in this one is that it is carbon fiber and the other is not. And it's also got a very large telescope mount up here, right here. Um, and then a set of o-rings right there but yeah it's a really really nice outfit and the legs are adjustable three different ways there's one there's two there's three so that one leg is right at probably I don't know close to being five foot tall right there so yeah now I've got um, three tripods that um, are really nice quality tripods that will keep the cameras nice and steady when I'm trying to film for you all uh, to put this up on YouTube. I don't know that this feels any lighter um, but like I said we couldn't get the others in aluminum anymore so we just went ahead I mean basically looks the same ordered the carbon fiber but uh, that is uh, some of the latest toys that I have picked up. I know in the last video you all probably seen me stacking up this material right here. Um, I have got a pretty good stack right here. Got one behind, got one over there behind the trash can, and then got another one down there. Um, and this is all maple. So that will be good fire starter and then I've got that whole big humongous box full of that rich pine that I'm going to have to bust up but uh, yeah this is really um, nice that I had a good friend call me up and tell me that he had brought this home from work instead of them dumping it um, he thought that I would be able to use it so he actually called me up and said hey I brought these over and he actually loaded them on the trailer with his forklift for me and 
we actually talked about uh, making a set of forklifts that would actually fit on the bucket um, that I could use up here to be able to you know lift pallets off and things of that nature so I just don't want to go and spend four or five hundred dollars for a set of forks that's why I use the straps but if we can come up with maybe a hundred dollars worth of scrap metal and he can weld it and make it fit the front of the bucket well then that saved me a lot of money so I, I may do some things here uh, the hard way but that's all in trying to you know save money and it's they work basically the same, just requires a little bit more effort, which, you know, it's not that big a deal. I don't mind putting forth the effort. I get a lot of different comments, you know, why don't you do this, why don't you do that? Well, primarily it's to save money. So, I remember when I was a kid, we uh, dug out a bank that was about eight foot high, and we put a retaining wall in there, and uh, we did it all by hand, you know. Um, shovel, wheelbarrow, and I recently rebuilt it a couple of years ago, and had some comments well you can't do that you don't have a backhoe I said well we didn't have a backhoe when we built it so um, you know sometimes you have to put forth a little bit of effort to get something done and to save money which you know I'm not a stranger to as you can tell anyway um, it looks like they need a little bit of loving they always have to have confirmation <laughs> Oh my goodness, what am I going to do with you two, huh? Why are you always wanting petted, huh? Why are you? And he's got to where he wants to sit up on his hind quarters now uh, when I pet him and kind of look at me straight in the eye. See there, he'll put one paw up. Now he, he's hurt this right one somehow. He must have sprained it jumping because he jumps all the time. But, uh, anyway, what, you want a little petting too, huh? All right. They're all wet, so I'm not going to pet them too much. Well, I'm going to see if I can answer a few questions now that people have. One of the comments that I've been getting on the rock, uh, basically that the rocks may fall off the wall. Um, the way that I did it actually was is I laid that first coat in there with a trowel. And what that does, the way that that metal is made is at an angle. So the mortar gets in behind it and it basically, it can't come out. But I also had purchased a whole box of wall ties. So um, as I go through there in courses, I put probably uh, six or seven wall ties along through in the joints. So that's going to hold the wall to uh, or hold the rock to the knee wall and when all that dries up the joints basically can't come off of the wall um, and since the rock are stuck to the joints now one thing that I did not do that um, I would probably normally do is scratch out my joints I left uh, the rock I left it flush basically just scratching the rock with that wire brush and washing it off so <clears throat> the rocks are pretty much wedged in there by the mortar so I've been down there and I've tried pecking on it with a hammer and those rocks that's a solid wall down there I don't think it, there's any way that it's going to come off you know the way that the rocks are shaped you know they've got different angles and they're cut and and uh, all the different sides um, when that mortar dries I don't see it being able to come off because it's held up by that wire mesh and then it's held up by the wall ties. So um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it, but the one thing that I will change is trying to create that suction effect uh, on there. So um, thanks for those types of comments. You know, somebody else said, you had me worried there when you said concrete. Looks like mortar to me. Um, it is mortar, okay? I say cement a lot of times because, you know, something that you're laying rock with or you're laying block with, it, it just comes out, okay? Um, maybe that's not uh, the correct word to use, but when I went to the store to purchase the material in order to lay the rock, I didn't go and get cement, I went and got mortar. I mean, I know what I'm doing, I, know, I should say I know what I'm looking for. Um, 
but when I'm talking about it, I may say cement, I may say mortar, I may say left, I may say right. When I mean the other, you know, it just, it just happens. But um, yeah, the uh, mortar, uh, putting that uh, dye in there, you know, I, I had black was another choice. I didn't think that that was going to look good. Um, so I really wanted a sand color, but they didn't have any. So what I've started doing is I've started mixing a little bit less in there and it's coming out a little uh, less pinkish, reddish pink, um, and it's lightening up just a little bit. Of course, that corner is going to be underneath the porch anyway, so I think the way that I'm doing it now, I will continue around the cabin because I'm pretty pleased with the, the color that it's uh, turning out to be with putting a little bit less in there. It's probably two-thirds of a bottle. You know, that the bottom of that bottle, um, it's... Uh, the, the top portion pours out easily but then there's like a third of the bottom down there it um, is set up kind of like a glue I don't know if it's been sitting there a long time I've tried shaking it up that doesn't help a whole lot so what I do is go ahead and empty what I can then put water in there and then really just shake the dickens out of it but I have come to find that two-thirds of it or possibly three-fourths is for me, it's making a much better color, and you'll see that on upcoming videos. But um, thanks for these types of comments because they are helpful. Somebody said that you have a lot of projects to do, but one day your projects will be finished then. What will you do? Can't see you not having nothing to do, but I guess on a homestead you never get finished. And you know that's true because I'll always be doing the firewood up until the point where I can't do it anymore. And that's a lot of work. I'll be feeding the chickens until I can't do that anymore. Um, my son and I, we got uh, our eye on, you know, doing starting that base camp uh, at some time because he's going to try to come up here more often since he can get the airfare now a whole lot cheaper than what he used to. And we think that we're going to do that all by hand. We're going to use up a lot of the treetops from the trees that I have cut down and we're going to build you know basically a bushcraft camp so that will be something that's upcoming we talked about the garage the workshop uh addition down here if i can get that tiny home moved out uh, so that it basically matches everything else up here that's exciting for me to be able to have a place to park the truck to be able to put all of my tools and so forth in there yeah i i'm looking forward to getting started on the garage and getting some you know when I get the rock foundation around there pretty much the whole outside of that cabin will be done get the back deck on and start doing some landscaping you know where I don't have red clay uh, everywhere and gravel and um, I think I'm going to change uh, the um, the uh, driveway you know there's a lot of rock up to the back of the cabin I'll pull all that out and that'll be a little bit of yard work right there uh, so it will make things a lot more um, beautiful up here and it will change the whole appearance so I you know and then a barn I've got a barn to build and I may at some point move that sawmill farther on down the hill into the woods where it's not so close um, so yeah I mean there's going to be a whole lot of projects the the entrance way down there fixing that up um, there's going to be a whole lot of projects to do so I'm not going to be hurting for anything um, in the next I don't think five or ten years to be able to do you know somebody said that uh, I know that you said that you want to capture water but have you ever thought about driving in a sand point well yourself I've never done it but I've seen it done on YouTube and it looks like it would work for you well I can tell you this that most of the people that come up here and drill uh, for example um, it's a minimum of 150 feet before they hit water and that's iron and sulfur I don't know if you can go deeper and hit um, a watershed that basically um, doesn't have that much in it but uh, the last home I can't remember I think I was at 140 um, it, may, it was somewhere between um, it was less than 200 feet, I can say that, but uh, I had to spend, I think it was $2,500 or $3,000 on a water softening system after the well, which cost me three or 4000 uh, just to be able to use the water 
um, you know, for uh, drinking purposes. And then when you wash white clothes over a period of time, even with that softening system, they can turn yellow. So I don't know that this area right here, because it's all shale and clay, um, that I could actually get a sand point tip that I could drive it in there. It, it, and if I did, it may take, you know, a tremendous amount of time and work to be able to do that. So, you know, and I thought that just, you know, putting in the rain softening system uh, would be my best bet in the long run because um, I wouldn't have to worry about, you know, lightning because we get a lot of summer storms here being in these mountains. I wouldn't have to worry about lightning hitting the pump and then having to pull it out and replace the pump or fix it and then put it back down in the hole. Uh, so, you know, just a uh, solar pump to be able to pump the water uphill so that I can use the gravity feed back downhill um, I think it's going to be my best bet um, after you know living here for a number of years and having neighbors you know and uh, talking about these issues and you know like I said there's an average of at least 150 feet so um, yeah that's the reason that I decided to go with the rain catchment system you know, uh, one person said, while you're considering constructing a garage slash workshop, perhaps you could consider adding a bay for your tractor and its accessories to keep them out of the weather. Um, I don't really have a whole lot of uh, area up here. Things are a little bit more closer than maybe what they seem on camera. At least I've had that opinion from people that's come up here to visit. But um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm either going to locate uh, the barn down in the hollow or up on the hill up there by the chicken house. Um, that way it keeps the, the tractor, you know, away from the house and I don't have all that equipment that I have to step over um, in the garage, um, you know, around the truck and it just be a whole lot less clutter where I frequent most and um, of course the workshop you know it will be a separate unit uh, even though it may be attached to the to the garage it'll be a separate unit separated by a wall and it will have all of the tools and things in there that we can um, you know have set up and use uh, because we, we have some ideas of what we might do uh, in the future uh, on some different things ideas that we've come up with but um, I'll share that with you later on if it comes starts to come to fruition but uh, having a workshop set up you know with everything in its place to be able to utilize that'll make things um, uh, a lot more uh, easier to work with and uh, having a garage to park the truck in I don't know if that'll be the last truck I actually purchase or not but um, we'll wait and see so far it's been a great truck um, but being able to get it out of the weather uh, will be nice. And I was going to add an addition on the end of the house because I actually left mortises in the post for that. But as I got to thinking about it, I thought, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, detach the garage because I want that back deck with a ramp coming out, especially for emergency services if something was to happen. They can come up here and pick me up a whole lot easier. And... Um, I thought, you know, having another building over there uh, would look cool. It doesn't make one so gigantic and um, making make things handy, you know. So those are some of the ideas and some of the plans that we've kicked around and thought about. And um, I think that that's what we're going to go with is something detached from the cabin. So um, appreciate all these comments, though. You guys uh, really do a great job of... of um, jogging our um, memories and, and giving us a lot of, you know, food for thought and, uh, or mental calisthenics, let me call it that. Um, the kids, you know, most of the time they read the comments before I do because I'm busy, you know, planning and working and videoing and editing and things like that, and I don't get to see them a whole lot like I used to, but, um, you know, they tell me about it and I do read some, so... Uh, thanks again so much for all of your uh, comments. And we also want to extend a very heartwarming thank you to you guys for supporting both of our channels. We can't thank you enough for that. Uh, if you're new to this channel, be sure and go check out 
uh, Smoky Mountain Outpost. That's where we do all the work up here. This is a review channel. It's a more behind the scenes. Uh, but we can't thank you enough for all that you guys do for us uh, in the views and sharing this with your family, friends, and neighbors. Also, if you're new, be sure to go to our website and check out. We do monthly giveaways on both channels, and we've also got new milestone giveaways, and you can find all the details there. So guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. If you want to see more Outpost Review, click the top left-hand corner. If you want to go check out the building on the Outpost channel, the most recent video, the bottom left-hand corner. We thank you so much. Everyone have a great day. We look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time. Mm -hmm.